Whether you've seen Longmire or not, the tale revolves around an aged sheriff who is doing his hardest to get along with the local Indian tribe while still trying to do his job and look after his community. The idea of the show is that when it comes to his town, Longmire will do whatever they can to do to get the job done. The series has seen quite some success with many dedicated fans tuning in every week. Behind the scenes, however, things aren't probably what you might expect. There are certain strict rules and behind the scenes secrets while on set that you don't want to miss. Stay tuned to find out all the insider information. Where is the show based slash filmed? Longmire is set in Wyoming's fictional Absaroka County. However, the majority of the series is shot in New Mexico. It was filmed throughout New Mexico, specifically at Santa Fe, Pesos, Los Alamos, and Las Vegas, not the Nevada casino town. Many of the stunning Wyoming exteriors, notably Walt Longmire's cabin, are modeled after the Val's Caldera near Las Vegas. Then there's the downtown Las Vegas Square, which represents Longmire's town and employment, including the sheriffs, the casino, and everything that happens in an office. Even the interiors were shot in Santa Fe, New Mexico at a site called Garson Studios. Why don't you film it in Wyoming? While New Mexico offers a 23 to 35 percent tax credit, Wyoming's maximum credit is only 15 percent, so it's no wonder that Longmire heads south. New Mexico also has more airports and easier transportation. Jackson Hole has only one terminal and nine gates, but it is the busiest airport in Wyoming. Furthermore, its highways pass through mountains, rivers, and canyons where extreme winter weather has been known to impose closures in June, making filming a series in Wyoming a nightmare. With major airports and broad roads, how about wide open mountainous scenery and western dive bars? New Mexico is going to be fine. Robert Taylor almost didn't get cast as Longmire, so who did? Robert Taylor has been in Hollywood for quite some time, but his most well-known and longest running character is that of Sheriff Walt Longmire. Coach Taylor, or more particularly the actor who played him, Kyle Chandler, was almost cast in the role of Walt Longmire. Chandler's role as a coach on the NBC sitcom Friday Night Lights garnered him a lot of attention in the industry. Chandler continued on to play roles in films including Argo, Zero Dark Thirty, The Wolf of Wall Street, and Manchester by the Sea, among others. His Walt Longmire can only be imagined. While Chandler's early career includes a country movie, the actor is a bit of a joker and may have contributed to the series' lightness that Longmire retains throughout the book series. Chandler has developed a roguish, strong cowboy look that would have fit the sheriff we're all familiar with as he's grown older. Regardless, it's difficult to picture Walt Longmire being played by anyone other than Robert Taylor today. And I think that is an opinion that is felt by all fans and viewers of the show. Netflix picked up Longmire before it was dropped. While A&E saw a show that didn't suit its overall strategy or target market, Netflix saw a show that filled a void in its own lineup. After a and &E canceled Longmire, the show's producer, Warner Horizon began peddling it around. Given the big audience, there was certainly a desire, especially given the season three cliffhanger. The older skewing audience, which has less appeal for advertisers seeking the coveted 18 to 49 demographic, was cited as a major factor for the cancellation by A&E. As a result, Netflix, which doesn't have to worry about advertisers, was a wonderful fit for the show. Streaming services subscriber model has revolutionized television in numerous ways. TV shows no longer have to adhere to advertising's core demographic thanks to the streaming model. This allows shows like Longmire to continue to entertain their audiences whether or not they are under the age of 50. The first three seasons were brought up by Netflix, which also promised the future seasons would be released. Netflix eventually canceled the show as well, however, the reason for this is still unknown. It did, however, allow the creators of Longmire to end the series with a suitable conclusion in season 6. Longmire is based on a popular novel series. What many viewers may be unaware of is that Longmire is actually based on the popular novel series. Longmire is an American Western criminal drama TV series which was created by John Coveney and Hunt Baldwin. The series debuted on the A&E Network back in June 2012. The popular series is based on Craig Johnson's Walt Longmire Mysteries series of novels. Walt Longmire, a sheriff in fictional Absaroka County, Wyoming, is at the core of 
the story. In investigating big crimes under his authority, he is supported by colleagues, friends, and his daughter. Walt Longmire, Robert Taylor, is the sheriff of Absaroka County, which is set in the fictional state of Montana. Henry Standing Bear, Lou Diamond Phillips, Sheriff Longmire's close friend and a Cheyenne man, provides knowledge and sometimes assistance in dealing with tribal police, with the exception of capital offenses. The Indian Reservation has its own police force with authority within the reservation limits. The companions deal with challenges such as gambling at a casino on the reservation, competing jurisdictional authorities for protecting people and prosecuting crimes, and other contemporary Native American issues as the series unfolds. So how many books does the Longmire series have? Craig Johnson has written 21 books in the Longmire series, as well as short tales. Knowing that the series is based on a novel means that we can be pretty certain when the story will come to a close and how many seasons we could be in store for. The shows based on the books, however, there are clear differences, most likely since they're adapting it slightly to a more modern landscape and time. Strict rules followed on TV sets. While we couldn't confirm or deny whether these rules applied to the Longmire cast, it is assumed that definitely most, if not all, applied, as these are the common, long-standing rules that just come along with the job of being an actor or actress. Stay tuned for some on set rules that pretty much all actors and actresses must follow. Don't complain about delays or long hours. First and foremost, actors and actresses are expected to not complain about delays on set or long hours, as in reality, this is just part of the job they signed up for. On film and television sets, long delays are typically unavoidable and the crew must be prepared to deal with them. It's pointless to whine and make matters worse for everyone else, so they should just keep their cool and wait it out. Hopefully the end result will be worth the wait. Only the director can say cut. The director is the only person on set who has the authority to declare cut while filming is taking place. No one else, including the actors, should ever interrupt. A-listers may be the lone exception to this rule, especially if their name is synonymous with the film or show. Don't ask for autographs. Now this one probably does not apply to a lot of sets. We can't imagine actors being furious over signing autographs, but we suspect this rule applies when filming and when on the clock as they don't want to have those interruptions to the production. Those who find themselves working with an A-lister or even a G-lister may experience starstruckness, which is quite normal. However, the crew must maintain a professional demeanor at all times, which includes refraining from bothering the star for autographs. There will be no staring or pointing. Phones always need to be on silent. If you neglect to put your phone on quiet while watching a movie or TV show, you will rapidly be quite disliked. That's because any phone noise could spoil a take, and no one wants to be the one to blame. Also, phones on vibrate cannot be used because the sound equipment would pick them up. Knowing the slang and set lingo. The next rule that's common on most TV and movie sets, knowing the slang and lingo. Knowing the jargon of the film industry is a must-have talent for behind-the-scenes crew employees. You won't be able to follow their instructions or converse with them if you don't comprehend their language. It may also be regarded to master jargon that is exclusively on your set. People must keep their tempers in check. Making a film or television show can be a frustrating experience for the crew at times, but everyone must maintain their composure even in the face of adversity. On set, losing your cool, yelling, or having an attitude will not be condoned. The director is the lone exception to the rule, as they are free to do whatever they choose. And there you have it. Everything you need to know about Longmire and some behind-the-scenes secrets, along with some common strict rules most TV sets have to follow. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Have you been tuning into Longmire? What has been your favorite season so far? Any theories on what's to come? Let us know. But but if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.